Hello, welcome to the Professor Knits podcast. My name is Nikki and I'm your host. And let me tell you, it has been a crazy couple of months around my household. And uh, yeah, I've been a little bit absent on social media as well as on YouTube. I, my channel disappeared for a while. I had to hide it um, for unrelated um, reasons I was just I was out of the country for a while and decided to hide my YouTube channel for personal reasons a couple different personal reasons um, don't worry I wasn't well I wasn't getting any serious hate mail or anything like that for some of the political um, opinions I've had over a few things let me tell you who people are fired up anyway <clears throat> no completely unrelated I love the hate mail keep it coming uh, completely unrelated, uh, my husband and I went on a trip of a lifetime. Um, we went to Israel for 10 days uh, in February. And it was, you know, a life-changing event. And leading up to it, we were really, really busy organizing ourselves to go. And then we were gone. And then since we've come back, it's been crazy uh, just getting caught up with everything. And so it's been... Um, pretty chaotic but in a good way and the trip like I said was life-changing um, the history the religion the politics uh, yeah I am a completely changed person at least in my mind I'm probably not that different <laughs> to anybody else but it was a, a pretty amazing experience we started out um, up in Tiberias at the Sea of Galilee and were there for five days and then went down to Jerusalem um, for five days and we had spent some time in the West Bank and uh, yeah I have to say um, it was pretty incredible um, and there were some pretty tense moments as well um, we were uh, part of not part of but we were I, I, um, I'm getting heavy right away. Uh, we were um, in close proximity and affected by uh, a terrorist attack, and, a sh and um, it was pretty, pretty terrifying. Um, we were all safe, but it happened very close to us, and we heard it go on. And hey, mom, I'm gonna go watch some movies with any other room while you're doing this. All right. <laughs> Shouldn't have been. Go. Leave in the comments about my videos. Bye. Uh, so anyways, I'm getting right into the serious stuff. I'm sorry about that, and I don't mean to. But it was just incredible, and we did have some pretty tense moments um, with uh, some of the political tension in Jerusalem. Um, and then being up on Temple Mount, which is most Jew Jews and Christians aren't allowed to access. Uh, but we got up there for about, I don't know, 20 minutes. There were some tense moments there. Um, but as tourists, we were always safe, but it was still, it was still interesting. Um, but that's, you know, a whole other story. What was kind of the cool part about this, my husband went for work. And so um, I went with him, and I'm so glad I did. Uh, and that the timing was right, because now uh, you can't get in and out of Israel without, I think, a two-week quarantine and I was supposed to go to Italy next week for spring break um, and I ended up having to cancel that trip several months ago um, but thank goodness I did because I would be losing out big time now because Italy's on this mandatory quarantine and I don't think they're allowing people in and out of the country um, so I feel very fortunate that I had the opportunity to travel to Israel when I did this year uh, Pretty amazing but the fun I mean the, the the cool part of the trip I mean all that was cool but the most eventful part of the trip is that I got tattooed Look at that. now I know a lot of um, kind of looks funny people get tattooed all the time and it's not a big deal but I always kind of prided myself on not jumping on the tattoo bandwagon that started up you know, in the early 90s is when tattoos started to become more mainstream. And then everybody started getting tattoos. And I always just resisted it. I have nothing against them, but I could never uh, f 
find one that I wanted. I just thought it was much too permanent. Um, I just wasn't, it didn't matter to me either way. Um, but there was this uh, tattoo parlor in Jerusalem called Razuk's, and it's been tattooing Christian pilgrims in Jerusalem for 700 years, uh, since the 1300s. And it's been, they claim, continuously in business and run by the same family for those 700 years, passed down from generation to generation. So I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, you know, that's, I do a lot of research on the Crusades and I've studied Jerusalem and the Holy Land in general quite a bit academically. Um, and so my husband and I decided that this was a, the perfect scenario in which I would get a tattoo. And we, we got matching tattoos uh, on our inside wrist. So I see it every single day, I'm reminded of it. And it's the Jerusalem cross. So it's the, the, the main um, cross with four smaller crosses uh, around it. Um, and that's the, the Jerusalem cross. So I, I can say that my tattoo pattern is 700 years old. Um, so I thought that was kind of the highlight of the trip. Um, yeah, so that's why I was kind of, I just kind of disappeared from most social media as well as YouTube uh, for almost two months. Um, and there were other things involved as well that, that are not as nearly as interesting or as important as that trip. But anyway, I'm still coming down off of it. We've been home now for three weeks and I'm still, you know, can't stop thinking about this trip. So that's my update. And uh, so I've got a lot to show you today because I've been knitting like a, a mad woman. And what's interesting is that I didn't get any knitting done in Jerusalem. I thought I would, or in the Holy Land. I thought I would. I brought several projects and this was, I thought, well, this will be my Jerusalem shawl that I'll knit from beginning to end in Jerusalem. No. I knit a little bit on the plane ride home and that was it. I did not pick up my needles once. Uh, because we were just so busy and I didn't want to look down ever, right? Uh, all the bus touring around that we did, I just couldn't take my eyes off that beautiful, beautiful country. Um, so I didn't, uh, I didn't do any knitting and that's okay. Uh, I'm glad I didn't because I would have, looking down too much, because I have to look at my knitting. I'm not one of these people who can walk around and knit and look up and knit. No, I've got to look at my knitting. Um, so yeah. But anyways before and after I did a lot of knitting and I'm wearing one of my finished objects. Isn't this gorgeous? Here, I'll pull it down. This has been on the needles for a while since the fall and it is uh, a Jennifer Steingass uh, pattern. She's, I think, my favorite now for sure, my favorite um, sweater designer and it's the Anasha design and I just it's the perfect it's the best fitting sweater I've made to date and I think that I've said that about other sweaters so this is really the best and I knit it with um, Jameson Spindrift Osprey the colorway I know I've talked a lot about how unusual and, and interesting the colorway is. Sometimes it looks gray, sometimes it looks beige, sometimes it looks brown. It's a really beautiful color. Um, with the contrast color up here on the yolk in uh, eggshell. Um, so I love this yarn. I was not too happy with it while I was knitting. I found it broke a lot, but I really, really like it. Like, I think it's going to be my favorite um, go-to British woolly wool uh, that I can get. And I, I believe I, I believe this one's available on the woolly thistle. I could be wrong. Maybe it's the other one, the other Jameson brand. Anyways, I can't remember. Uh, but I love it. Absolutely love it. I wear it all the time, and I, it's next to skin soft. I mean, I am wearing a T-shirt underneath because I'm about to take this off because it's too warm now here in Knoxville. Um, but I've, when I've worn it, I've worn it without anything on underneath. And it's, it's, it's a little scratchy, but nothing I can't handle. Like it's, it's fine. So 
I absolutely, absolutely love this sweater. I've had really, really good luck um, knitting sweaters in the last 12 months or so. I've been really happy with pretty much all of them. I think there's only one sweater uh, that I haven't been happy with and I didn't even show it on this podcast, I don't think. Um, or maybe I did, I can't remember. It was the Mayu sweater by Espace Tricot. But uh, yeah, this, they just, I guess as I get to be a better sweater knitter, I make wiser choices about size um, and uh, I'm getting better at picking out the right yarn for the project and I always like a, a wool and spun woolly wool for these types of sweaters. So yeah, the Anasha pattern uh, by Jennifer Steingas and I've knit three of her um, two or three of her sweaters now and I'll knit more. I have more that I've already purchased. I'll keep knitting her sweaters. That's the first finished object. My second finished object is uh, something that's been off the needles for a little while since before my trip. And it's another uh, girl from the grocery store shawl by Hohi Locatelli. This is the third one of that pattern I've knit. Um, and I just love this pattern. I think it's uh, the perfect size. It takes almost two skeins. Three skeins is getting too big. I, I have made a couple of shawls that are three skeins of fingering weight yarn. And it's, I like them, but I like to wear my, my shawls often wrapped around my neck and a three skeiner is too much. This two skeiner is perfect. And it's just a really straightforward, easy pattern to knit. There is some lace work, but it, it's not that cumbersome. And the first two I've made, I've given away. Um, the second one that I made, I only gave away recently to my bestie because she commented that, would you ever knit me something? And I was like, yes. I'm like, but do you want this? Because the, the colors were perfect for her. And she said, yeah. And I'm thinking, okay, take this. Plus I'll knit you something. I already knew I was knitting this one and I don't I, I really like these colors, this combination. So what's the yarn? All right, I have my Ravelry page open because all the ball bands and everything are long gone. Um, and on my project page, oh, this was my Christmas Eve cast on. Yeah, now I'm, I'm remembering. Uh, so the green, this lime, beautiful lime green color um, is Swamp Bunny Fiber. And the colorway is Gatorland, and I bought it in Black Mountain uh, Yarn Shop in North Carolina when I had gone last year to meet Stephen West. Um, so I think, I think that's a local North Carolina dyer. And then the purple that actually has quite a bit of uh, green in it, um, a beautiful kind of speckled yarn, um, is Garn Stories in the Moonbird colorway. And they're both uh, single ply yarn. I really like single ply yarn. Both 100% superwash, no, 100% wool superwash um, in the singles colorway. Are you helping yourself to a peanut butter spoon? Yeah, because you're too busy. Because I'm too busy. Love you. Thank you, love. Hey, at least he's dressed. I'm just thanking, thanking myself that he's dressed. Yeah, so Professor Knits, uh, Swamp Bunny Fiber is the green, Garn Stories Merino Singles is the purple. And that was some expensive yarn, that uh, Garn Stories. Uh, it was a very expensive skein of yarn, but I like it a lot. Um, and I've worn this a lot. Um, because I wear a lot of neutral colors and this is perfect just to put on and I just really like uh, my complexion next to um, this green and this purple. So, girl from the grocery store shawl, Hoki Locatelli, Hoki Locatelli, pardon me, third time I've knit it. Um, I don't plan on knitting it again anytime soon, um, but I suspect I will eventually uh, knit it again. So that's number two for a finished object. 
Number three, I know, right, is another shawl. And it's another repeat pattern. I knit this pattern, it's uh, Helen Stewart, of course, uh, and her Sea Gleam shawl, which is part of the Shawl Society 4. And I knit one for a friend um, that I had shown that I'd knit in my yarn and gave it to her and said, you know, I have to knit another one. And I did. Here you go. I love this pattern. Now, I'll talk about the yarn in just a second, but I think I'm going to give this one away too, and it just breaks my heart. Um, but there's this woman that uh, that has become close to me and my husband, and uh, I just really I think she's knit worthy. I still I'm I'm not 100% sure yet. She might not be the type to wear a woolen knit, but this isn't even wool; it's alpaca. But I don't know. She's got beautiful pale skin with blonde hair and bright blue eyes. So I just feel like this would look really good on her. And I had her in mind when I was knitting it, but it breaks my heart to give this shawl away again, like this pattern. So if I do give it, I have to knit it like for sure immediately for myself. Yeah. It's just the perfect um, pattern if you want a shawl that you can wear in a very, uh, like that you can actually get shoulder coverage with. Like if you're wearing, let's say, um, something and you need to cover your shoulders at night maybe, it's the perfect size. The girl from the grocery store shawl, I've done that with this one, but it's not quite the right look. It's a little too casual of a look, I think. Um, but this one, I mean, look at it. It's just the perfect, like, oh, I have to throw this on over my shoulders without it being, uh, with it still looking delicate and, and feminine, right? Without it looking uh, grandmotherly-ish, um, which is fine too, but you know what I mean. Like, it's just still, it looks so, to me, it looks so classy. Now, the yarn is my own yarn. It's Medusa yarn and fiber. And maybe that's another reason why I don't want to give it away is because this is my luxury base. This is my muses base, which is my 70% baby alpaca, 20% silk, 10% cashmere. So it is, like I just, I want to sleep on a bed made of this yarn. It is so, so luxurious. Um, and it's the Brizzo colorway, which is kind of like my most popular signature colorway, at least at fiber festivals it is. So I've always got it in stock. Um, I might not be able to give this one away. And you know, I made a huge mistake in it. Uh, I had dropped a stitch without noticing and I, got, I was kind of lazy and I didn't have a crochet hook. And so I just pulled I don't know if you can see it right there. I just pulled the stitch up instead of weaving it in and out. And it's really obvious to the trained eye, but to the untrained eye, it's not obvious. So I don't know. How dare I give a gift that has a mistake in it? I might have to knit it again for her. But And then another thing about this shawl is because of this particular yarn being so light, um, it goes in a nice wrappy way without being heavy or bulky or itchy. Yeah, so Brizzo Medusa Yarn and Fiber, the Sea Gleam Shawl by Helen Stewart. Um, so when I knit this again, which I will, like I might even cast it on later today, um, it will no matter what be for me. Or this one will be for, I don't know, maybe both will be for me. Yeah. If you haven't, if you're a shawl knitter and you haven't done Sea Gleam, do it. And I suggest doing it either with a solid color or um, a nice hand dyed yarn that might have speckles. But I think that the real classy look to it is with um, either a solid or a very, like, very slightly tonally solid. Like I, I wouldn't do this with a variegated, for example. 
because I think that it's such a beautiful, intricate, yet easy uh, pattern that it would kind of overtake the yarn or the yarn would overtake the pattern. I don't know. I would stick with a yarn like this, kind of um, hand-dyed solid, so you still get the, the light reflecting off of it. Love it. All right, now what about some of my works in progress? So that's three finished objects. Okay, so some of my works in progress um, have been on the needles for so long. I don't even know if I should talk about them. Uh, also in that colorway on Medusa Yarn and Fiber, but this time on my Sirens base. I've got a hat on the go, a filigree hat by Wormy Wormhead, but I haven't made any progress. If I've shown this to you before, I don't remember, but if I've shown it to you before, I have not made any progress on it. But I think it's nice to see how the same colorway knits up differently on the same base. I mean, they're the same color clearly, but there's more black, darker shadowy feels in the, in the Sirens base, because this one is a single 70% merino wool, 30% silk. Um, no progress, which is a shame because I do need a nice cute hat, because this will be a very delicate hat. It won't be like a toque. Um, another work in progress that I have is another hat. And this one is just a basic beanie. Like I have not, I'm not following a pattern. I just cast on 84 stitches, uh, knit one by one ribbing, one by one, yeah, one by one ribbing for a couple of inches and then knit in the round. And now I'm gonna start the decreases. So just a basic patternless hat, a vanilla hat, if you will. And this yarn um, was extremely expensive. So I wanna make sure, I've knit this before. I had actually knit the hibernating hat by Stephen West. And I took a picture of it to show that I had done it, but then I frogged it because it was too big for my head. I had kind of messed up. I had used a, a needle size bigger than I was supposed to. And I have a, a pretty small head um, overall. Like my circumference is the same, it's pretty standard, I think 21 inches, but my overall, the roundness of my head is quite small. So it was just too big. And this was La Bienname yarn. Way, way too expensive uh, to not use. So I decided just to knit a basic vanilla hat I still have to finish it so I know it'll fit, right? Um, and when I'm done, which will be probably later today, because I just have to do the decreasing, I'm gonna put this pom-pom on it. I think that'll be pretty cute. Uh, so yes, La Bien Aime, um, the yarn I bought at Black Mountain when I had purchased the yarn for this. Um, so that didn't stay in my stash for very long and this was the Aran weight, 100% uh, superwash uh, merino Aran weight in the Peche Mignon colorway. Beautifully, beautiful, soft and delicate uh, peachy white with some speckles, different colored speckles in it. I really liked it. And I knit it held with, um, what's this yarn called? It's not mohair, it's, I gotta look on my project page if I kept it. Let me see here. Uh-oh, no internet. No, there we go. Um, what's it called? Ah, Blush Fiber Company, the Lace Brushed Suri Alpaca. Uh, and I bought this, it was a trunk show um, at my local yarn store. Um, Loopville. I had picked that up there and then I had picked up the La Bienne May at the Black Mountain Fiber or Black Mountain uh, yarn shop in North Carolina and held them double or held them together pardon me and I got this beautiful fuzzy uh, ball of yarn. Quite a bit left over to put into maybe a cozy memories blanket or something but again like very expensive hat, very, very expensive hat. Um, 
considering it doesn't get very cold here, but I will wear it next winter for sure. It's too late now. Um, it's already in the 50s and 60s, even at night here. Um, so yeah, that'll be done soon and I'll have it ready for my next podcast as a finished object. So I don't have any pattern to share with you for that one. All right, now, Another work in progress that's been languishing for a couple weeks because I made a mistake, um, but I really love knitting it. It's new to me. Uh, this kind of, no, I, I don't know if it's new to me. But anyways, it's Moonstruck Knits. She's a, <laughs> hold on. Gotta check my project page again because you know my, me, I gotta fly by the seat of my pants. Is it on here? Yes. Okay, so it is Natasha, Natasia Hornby, who is also, I believe, Moonstruck Knits. And she's a pretty popular designer. She's done a lot of interviews on the different podcasts. I think she's been on Fruity Knitting Podcast, which is my favorite. And I think that's probably where I was first introduced to her. And I know I've got a lot of her... Um, patterns in my queue but I decided to knit this this is the lunai I'll put up a picture the lunai shawl because she's having a mosaic knit along cow and it ended already it was uh, started January 1st and ended February 28th or 29th because I guess it's a leap year and I was on target like I first started and I I was going on it um, but then I made a mistake uh, in one of the sections. <clears throat> so this is just the beginning of the shawl. And right here, this section that, was, that needs to come out and be symmetrical with this section, um, I made a mistake. And it bothered me because this is such a big project in terms of mosaic knitting. It's like you're knitting every row twice right like it's a lot it's not color work uh, it's slipping stitches and it feels like twice the work at least that's the way it feels to me anyway um, and it, uh, I was off I had just lost count somehow and I was off on my row count and that would have been fine except you have to pick up stitches along the edge to do the next section and it needs to be symmetrical and I tried a couple times fudging it and I just couldn't get the right stitch count <clears throat> on picking up along the edge. So that, well, you know, it's just one small section, as you can imagine, this from here to here, but on the other side, like, ah, I can do this, not a big deal. But of course, silly Nikki, it's um, moss stitch, or what is it? No, 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 it's, it's mosaic, Knitting and purling, like it's a textured knit that looks, it's not moss stitch, but it looks like moss stitch. It's a star stitch, that's what it is. And you achieve it by doing a series of slip stitches and also um, passovers, right? Like pulling, um, knitting a couple stitches or slipping a couple stitches, then pulling, uh, slipping one over top of the other ones. So it makes this beautiful, beautiful star stitch pattern. But guess what? You can't just tear it out. You can't just rip it back. You have to pick it out. So, and that's taking forever. I've had to pick it out one stitch at a time. And if you can imagine, it was completed. It's taken me longer to pick out three inches of this knitting than it did to knit all of this and then some. Um, so you might be saying, well, why not just cut it here pick out what's left and then start over. Well, the reason I'm not, I didn't do that and I wanna keep the yarn, oh, and because of the way you have to pick it out, you can't just ball up the yarn as you go. It has to be just the, 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 the thread has to be a single thread to pull it through all the slip stitches. Nightmare, let me tell you. But I'm persevering and I do a little bit every night. Um, uh, while watching TV um, and so eventually I'll get this back down and I'll start again on, on this third color. So the reason why 
I'm not just cutting it and calling it a loss of yarn is because uh, it only takes one ball of each color. It's three colors and there's only one ball of each color. And I'm nervous that if I lose all this yarn, I'll run out of, of the color, that I won't have enough yarn. And I dyed this yarn up specifically for this project and I didn't write it down. Now you, I mean, it's not that difficult to match up a gray um, but I don't want to mess with that. Plus, it's a base that I don't use a whole lot. It's my 80-20 base. Um, and I don't have a whole lot of it. I don't think I have any of it right now. And I had dyed up these two grays, one dark, one light, specifically to go with this shade of red for this shawl. Because I think gray and red is beautiful. Um, so I don't want to run out of yarn. So I'm trying to save as much yarn as possible. Can you please help me? Can you please get me um, a in just a second. I'm almost done. Please. I'm almost finished, Please, Oscar. Mom. Please. But I'll get something. There's probably a fruit snack in my purse. Go dig in my purse. <laughs> so this yarn is not my yarn. So these two are Medusa yarn and fiber uh, that I dyed up special for Mommy, this. You were all this okay. is a skein of yarn I picked up in London a couple of years ago. It's the Travel Knitter BFL, 80% uh, BFL, 20% nylon, or is it 100% BFL? It's 100% BFL, pardon me, um, in the double happiness colorway. So it's just this fantastic red. And when I was there, um, it's, the, it's the London yarn store that is wooly something, wooly... I can't remember, but there will something in the title. Uh, and I, I had always wanted to try Travel Knitter. Did you get it? Yep. Okay. I'd always wanted to try Travel Knitter yarn. Um, and for some reason when I was there, I only bought one skein of it. And what I should have done was buy three so that because I love the color so much, I could have knit a sweater out of it. But I was just in that frame of mind where I wanted to try different yarns that I that you can't get very easily here in the US. And I thought, well, I'm not gonna knit just a pair of socks with this. It's too beautiful to be hidden. Because um, as much as I like wearing socks, I don't wear them, as much as I like knitting socks, I don't wear knitted socks that much. Because uh, I wear dress shoes to work and they're just too, too thick for dress shoes. But um, yeah, I just absolutely wish I had bought all three skeins that were there. Um, so I could have knit a beautiful sweater, a color work sweater even, um, with this as the main color. But live and learn. I'll be back in London someday. Uh, so I will um, knit it again. Or I'll, I'll pick up some travel knitter again. Um, yeah. So anyway, this is going to be a stunner. It's going, it's, it's going to be a conversation piece, I can tell. Most of my knitting because I don't know a lot of knitters at my work. Um, I think there's only one other woman there who knits and I don't see her, like I see her once every three months. Um, so people often ask me about my knitting, but this is gonna be, people are gonna ask about it. Look at that, isn't that gorgeous? And I, I a lot of the people in the cow are European, I noticed, um, cause she is, is she a, Dutch? A Dutch or Danish? I can't remember. I think she's in Amsterdam, so um, Dutch. Um, most of the people in the cow are knitting it this particular pattern um, or one of her other mosaic shawls with woolly wool. And I never think to knit a shawl with a woolen spun yarn. I always go to the sock yarns, the fingering weight um, sock yarns that are merino wool um, but I and, and I when I when I look at the project pictures in Ravelry the stitch definition that they are getting with the woolly wool is unbelievable but I think that I'm doing the, the same here because BFL is a bit of a more structured yarn I find um, and this particular base 
is also uh, a very structured yarn. So I feel like I'm getting a really good st stitch definition out of it. Like I would never knit this project with um, my Muses base, right? My soft alpaca silk cashmere. It would The stitch definition would be lost on it. So yeah, I'm gonna get back to this and then once I've gotten over having to do all this tear back that takes forever, I'm going to monogam monogamously knit on this. Yeah. If you haven't tried mosaic knitting, I suggest trying it if you like the, the look. Um, initially, I didn't know if I would like how it looks. I think I would prefer color work, but now that I'm doing it, when you find the right pattern, I really do like it. I do like the, um, the, the, the way it knits up. Okay, I have one more work in progress. Well, I've got lots, but only one more that I'm gonna share with you guys. And that is another shawl. And this is another one that I've knit before. It is Lisa Much and her auspice. And I'll put a picture here. Um, it's a one skein shawl. And I wanted to um, knit up a, skein, uh, a shawl. Once again, for another woman my husband works with, you're gonna start wondering about my husband. I keep knitting up all these uh, shawls for women he works with, uh, but they, like, they really make his life <clears throat> um, a lot better and a lot, uh, his work a lot easier. And it might sound kind of patriarchal that it's the, the guy and he has all these women helping him. Um, so it does sound a little patriarchal, but that's not the way my husband views it, it's not the way they view it, and it's certainly not the way I view it. It's just that women tend to help more, right? They tend to be willing, in my experience, women tend to volunteer their time or help out in their communities uh, more so. Um, and that's the case with these three women that I've been talking about. Um, and this, this one is kind of like, uh, my favorite because not only does she d do amazing things um, for my husband but she also lets us use her amazing cabin uh, on a regular basis and we're going to be going out there uh, next week for spring break and I'd like to get this done by Sunday to give to her and she's a tiny tiny person so a one skein shawl like she's probably five feet 100 pounds maybe teeny tiny um, and I want to get this done and so a one skein project is perfect for her size she'd be overwhelmed in anything else and she likes to wear really vibrant pinks and purples and so this is uh... sorry about that my husband was calling and uh, I had to take that um, so anyways uh, this woman um, likes to wear a lot of vibrant pinks and purples and things like that. So I dyed up um, this yarn, uh, not with her in mind, I was just dyeing and over dyeing and experimenting with color. And I came up with this. And it's not something I would necessarily wear, but it's definitely something she would wear. Um, I love the pink and it's got some blues and browns in it, which is quite pretty. But again, just not something that I'm drawn to. Um, but I showed her a couple of different skeins of yarn and let her pick, and this is what she picked. Okay, so it's really, really vibrant. And the more I look at it, the more I like it. I, it's just not, not my choice. Uh, and so it's a nice small one skein shawl, really interesting construction, very easy to memorize the pattern and just sit and go. And um, I'm more than 50% of the way done, so I should have it finished before the weekend so I can give it to her before we go out to use her cabin as a, as a thank you. Uh, yeah, so that's a lot. Three finished objects, what, four works in progress. I'm also still working on my Reagan cardigan. But there's really, it's just this long, long tube so far that is the arms that stretches from arm to arm across the back. Uh, but not a lot of progress has been made on that, so I'm not gonna, I won't get into any detail until I have more to show. Yeah, that's it.
but that's a lot. Um, thanks for tuning in. If you like what you see, please hit the subscribe button and hit the like button. I have such a hard time remembering to say that or even asking people to do it. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, get your knit on. Take care.